It's become quite popular to rip British food to shreds, mostly by the uncultured, chronically online, people who've never stepped foot on our soil to even experience our culinary world for themselves. Despite what these idiots say, our cuisine is much more than eating beans on toast for breakfast. We have some of the most exciting restaurants in the world, and the prestigious Michelin Guide clearly agrees, as there are 161 Michelin star restaurants, 22 Michelin star restaurants, and eight free Michelin star restaurants across the UK. And let's not forget that many of the most influential and wildly successful celebrity chefs come from the UK. One such chef is a famous and very well-respected master of his craft, who has maintained one of the highest accolades in the food world, a lofty two Michelin stars, Derbyshire born Sat Baines, who owns restaurant Sat Baines on the outskirts of Nottingham. My name is Sat Baines. I'm the chef patron of restaurant Sat Baines in Nottingham. It's a seven bedroom hotel with uh, 40 covers, a uh, two Michelin star restaurant. Uh, the food is modern British with influences from all over the world with my travels and uh, my background. So it's a modern British menu. As a foodie and lover of fine dining, I just had to visit this place and I've had my eyes on it for so long. Finally, I get to treat myself to a Saturday lunch, thanks to my dad, who bought me a voucher for this restaurant as a birthday present back in July. I'm really looking forward to this and my expectations are insanely high. It has a lot to live up to. But first, I had to navigate my way through Wilford Village to find the tricky rural location. Good afternoon. Welcome to Andy PTV and welcome to Wilford Village, Nottingham. It's quite a pleasant Saturday afternoon to say we are coming close to November in England. And I'm on my way to have lunch at restaurant Sat Baines. I'm very excited because this is the second two Michelin star restaurant that I've ever visited. I've been to about 13 Michelin star restaurants, but the only other one that had two um, was Dinner by Heston at the Mandarin in Knightsbridge, London. And that was in 2017. Still remember it very fondly. Absolutely stunning meal. So this I'm sure will be just as good and I'm very excited. Now this is cool, there's some pretty cool artwork here. And particularly um, amused by what seems to be a number of cartoon character crossovers. It looks like Mario and uh, is it Charlie Brown and Marge from The Simpsons all in one character? I don't think there is a footpath over there. I must be the first person to visit restaurant Sat Baines who's took this route. Walking around admiring graffiti before I go to one of the most prestigious restaurants in the country. That's how we do it on Andy, Andy PTV. We're a little bit unconventional, you know? And we found a bridge that doesn't cross the river. So it's kind of defeated the purpose of finding a bridge. I think I've found my way. According to Google Maps, I'm on the right track. We've made it. Restaurant Sat Baines, and in time for a drink. So here we are, in the bar area, where I've ordered an aperitif called Salty, which sounded interesting. Let's see what that's like. First impressions are, it's a beautiful, beautiful interior. It's very modern, very classy. That's an impressive wine list. Here we have the aperitif. Entered with a number of options. There's the seven course or the ten course. I think I'm going to go all out. I'm going to go with the ten course. And I'm going to add the duck liver muesli. Why not? Even go for the wine course as well. And this things that you get with it. Six minutes until my reservation. I've ordered the 10 course menu, thrown in some duck liver muesli, gone for the wine pairing. And now I'm having a beer before I enter the dining room. 
have arrived at my table. So we are starting with a lovely looking Riesling. I do love the Riesling. Hi, I just have your first course here with me. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Thomas. Food by Zabi, looking after you. Nice to meet you. No problem. So, for your first course, we have the introduction to the five tastes. We have five individual snacks. Um, Talking of the left side, we have salty, my tapioca cracker. They're sitting in a mini mayonnaise on the bottom. Working our way to the right from here, we have a potato two wheel, topped with candied potato. Just make it with birch syrup. Uh, your next one, green in colour, we have a lemon verbena pastel. It's covered in lemon <laughs> verbena sugar. Wow. And we do also have a mushroom tiramisu that's been made with coffee. It's got an extra bitterness. On the right hand side, it is our Lincolnshire Porter cheese soup. And the chef designed all of these snacks to be finger food, so please use your hands for this course. And Especially do you recommend like an order? For these? There is no right or wrong order. The only recommendation I can make here to leave the pastel last. Yeah. It is super refreshing for your palate, just to get you ready for your next course. Sounds amazing, thank you very much. Enjoy, no problem. I love these little, yeah. these little stars that they do in Michelin, Michelin style fine dining restaurants. They just excite the palate and get you ready. He says there's no right or wrong order, so apart from the pastel should be last, which is a given I suppose. So I'm just going to go for this one. Let's just get some of that. Foamy and cheesy at the same time, it's like got an amazing <sighs> If you like cheese, this is like heaven. <laughs> this is just like a work of art. Look how it holds together. So this is it's like a, inspired by a tiramisu. And that's the best thing I've had so far of these. They were all really good. I love the cheese thing. This is the best. Oh wow. It's like dusted with herbs. So you've got the sweet jelly pastel flavour, but then you've also got like a you've got like a herby flavour as well. What's so good about all these dishes is that it's like there's so many flavour contrasts in each item. Sweet, savoury, salty, sour. And it works. It just awakens the taste buds. For your first, for your bread, we have the chef's 11 years old sourdough, some chicken muffins, and the Lincoln Chef Porter salt and butter. Thank you very much. And then there was more. Um, so so uh, up next, we are actually going for probably my favourite dish on the menu. Um, it's not to say the menu is going to plummet down or, uh, or anything from here. Uh, first of all, do we enjoy the, the uh, sparkling wine? It's lovely. Like yeah. I say, it's very drinkable, very refreshing. Yeah, and it's, it's just something you can drink without food, food it's easily. Easily, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. So, um, yeah, the next dish, um, we are going for a wine from Alsace, so mm -hmm. just on the border of Germany, so not too far from where we just were. Um, Alsace is a region very famous for being part of Germany in two separate occasions, uh, but of course it's now part of France. This is wine made by uh, Domaine Leon Boesch, this is their Cuvée called Le Coq, and it's made with 100% Pinot Gris, one of the native varieties to, um, to Alsace. Now, um, with that, the, the next dish for us we feel it requires freshness and acidity to cook through. Um, similarly to the previous one with all mm -hmm. those different flavours, the freshness of the wine to go against it. Uh, but this dish for us is, is meaty, smoky, it's rich. Um, so yeah, we need something with racy sharpness to go against it. So Lovely. Pinot Gris, um, we're in really high altitude. And Domain Leon Boish is a style, uh, produce wines with purity, freshness and acidity. So for us it would work really, really perfect. For me, the wine's all about this beautiful citrus, it's like stone fruit character and lovely spiciness as well. So I hope Sounds you enjoyed it. Great, thank you. I have your El Corse here with me. So in here we have our small beer on the bottom with some sourdough croutons mixed in an eel mayonnaise. This top with a dash of jelly as well as some truffle and pickled turnips. Your sauce is a roast chicken gravy. Mm. 
smoky, intensely fishy, with the roast chicken gravy that just brings out this really rich, meaty flavour that somehow works so well, even though it's fish, like a fish course, with chicken gravy. In the hands of a lesser chef, that would be a disaster, but in the hands of this kitchen team, perfection. And when we talk potato dish uh, here at RSB, kind of celebrate the humble ingredient and kind of showcase what you can do with it. And uh, this yeah. one serves us in a uh, potato hollandaise, mm -hmm. pickled shallot. So the dish itself has got a nice sour character, and then also we've got some Exmoor citrus caviar, so it's got that saltiness, that nice umami character to it as well. So we are now in uh, Galicia, so we're in the northwest of Spain, just above Portugal. Mm -hmm. uh, and this part of Spain, they, they call it Green Spain. So it's very maritime, very rainy. Of course, it's different to the rest of Spain, but it's very dry and very hot. So it allows them to make these quite crispy, mineral, really fresh, lean styles of wines. Um, for me, these are kind of seafood style wines, really. Um, yeah. But this is coming from a, an area called Ribera Sacrum, um, and this is called La Pola, made by Domino de Bibe. On the bottom here, we have our just potatoes. They've been steamed in seaweed bottom. They, the chefs use combo for this. Uh, sitting in a bowl potato mayonnaise, got with some pickled shallots, as well as our extra warm Oceano caviar. Super creamy, super nutty on the palate. That's very good. Compliments the dish really nicely. On top we have some ash made of alliums. If I may just suggest to grab a spoon, the right to the bottom of the dish, to get all the flavors in that box. It's like almost like the fanciest potato salad that I've ever had in my life. Really meaty, smoky, rich, slight earthiness as well. Um, so because there's a, a pair of we needed something with freshness, zip, and acidity. So we are uh, we are now in Alsace. Of course, it was incredible. It's so funny how it's like presented in such a way that it just looks like soil on the top but then you put your spoon right into the bottom and it uncovers all these layers. Of... So your next dish is the, the additional course, so the uh, duck liver muesli from um, Sats Archives. Mm -hmm. Now, um, duck liver, very very classically with duck liver, chicken liver, foie gras, that kind of thing, mm -hmm. is paired with uh, sweet wine, specifically so it's like the very classic pair. Now, yeah. not just because of that, uh, we've gone for a dessert wine, but because ours we actually serve frozen in liquid nitrogen. So the... <laughs> Sorry for interrupting. No the problem. Next course we have uh, muesli. So on the bottom here we have a apricot puree that is topped with a fine bean salad made with some shallots. On top, what you can see, we have some granolas, some roast chicken skin, and a frozen duck liver parfait. The chefs use um, liquid nitrogen. They pour the parfait into it, and it makes us these nice granitas that are super cold. As you are spooning the dish, as you are eating it, it just melts nicely. Enjoy. Wow! Thank you. Chemistry meets cooking. One of the other interesting things about fine dining is how often they apply like some really inventive and clever sciences to their cooking processes. Mm. Mm. That is genuinely exceptional. I'm gonna need to put a little bit of that. Red. Of course, we have our own twist on the Japanese dish, the makiro. On the bottom here, we have a seaweed biscuit, top it our cooked and cured salmon, and it's wrapped in a seaweed jelly. As well as that seaweed, it is infused with some Japanese spices like teriyaki, ginger, and chili. On the top, we have some yuzu mayonnaise, wild garlic puree, puffed wild rice, and some freshly grated wasabi as well. Enjoy. Thank you. I'm going to eat this sushi style. I'm just going to take it in my hands. <laughs> Saltiness from the cracker at the bottom. The jelly gives it an interesting texture. 
the mayonnaise. Just look at this. The salmon, that is good quality salmon. That is. I'm going to take another sip and then I'm going to finish the rest of this and then finish the rest of this. So, ragu with English venison. We're serving it with a cannelloni of mixed vegetables. Some cooked, some raw, some pickled. Emulsion with nutmeg. And then some eight-year-old parmesan cheese. It's amazing. Truly good wine. Really enjoy that. So let's go with the... The venison ragu takes me back to July. Mm. That is phenomenal. We have our grouse dish. And the, before I start the explanation, I do need to let you know as grouse being a vile bird, hunted with, they use shotguns to hunt. Yeah, so you might have a chance for a pellet inside. Yes. No problem, I'll take the chance. <laughs> Crunch is not always the best thing here. Yeah. Wow. So on the bottom, we have a nut stew. It is topped with our grouse sausage made from the leg meat, as well as some pickled blackberries and blackberry vinegar jelly. On top we have the breast of the grouse with some vinaigrette and finish the top with a rose grouse sauce. Enjoy! Thank you! I wish they invented some kind of miraculous technology where you could smell through the camera because this smells so good. Well, the jelly, a little bit of the breast meat, a bit of the sausage and a bit of blackberry. Game of meat in British restaurants, fine dining restaurants, is on the next level. It is truly something else. Like genuinely, it was a choice between Dover Soul and this. And although I'm genuinely a fish guy, when it comes to British fine dining, I find that things like grouse, pigeon, you know, wild birds, they're usually pretty spectacular. And this is no exception to that theory of mine. Every time I eat pigeon, grouse, other birds that are hunted with guns, I'm always warned they might be shot within it. It's a, it's a risk you've got to take because of course it will remain in the meat if it's penetrated the bird. Never ever have I found any until now. Now I have found a bit of shot. I'm gonna keep it. I'm gonna hold on to that. <laughs> the jus that came with that was incredible. That I'm so tempted to just break all the rules, lift the plate, and lick it like a barbarian. I won't do that though. <laughs> if I had like a little Bernard's watch stopwatch that could pause time. I definitely would. Really good. Fantastic main course. We've got this crossover because we are moving from savoury to sweets. This course is to have your pellets transition. On the bottom we have a rice pudding puree inside some raspberry as well as shizu. On top we got caramelized rice crispies and with this finished off with some sake granitas. Ciao. Thank you. Mmm. Sort of panna cotta sort of thing to it. And then you got the jam. Then you got the caramelized rice crispies which just give it a nice bit of crunch and a nice extra little bit of sweetness and Mm. Go 
a sweet tooth? I do, a little bit, yeah. Well, it's a very make? sweet one. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, this one's to go with our chocolate dish. Um, okay. Chocolate top. Now, obviously, it's a chocolate dish. They're usually quite robust. Um, I need something with quite a lot of sugar and richness to go against that. So, we've yeah. gone for one of my favourite um, dessert wines, which is Top Fine, which is a region in, in Hungary. Very famous mm. region. And this is made by Saka Pintz, 2019. And uh, this is his late harvest cuvee, made with a great variety called Fulmint. Um, now, what makes these wines, in my opinion, so special and so delicious, they're actually using fruit um, or grapes that have been affected by rot. Um, Tritis, noble rot is the, is the more kind of fun name for it. <laughs> and obviously, it sounds very negative, but it's, it's not. It's, it's what winemakers look for. Um, yeah. It happens when the grapes are ripe and the conditions are ripe, they are kind of wet, damp, misty, and so the yeah. afternoon it kind of draws this almost like mold essentially onto the grape seeds. Yeah. And what that does is it um, gives these complexities of flavour you just can't get without it. It's actually used quite a lot all, all over the, all over the uh, world, this, this kind of style of dessert wine. And for me it gives these really kind of marmalade, orange character, ginger, saffron, spiciness, such wide fruits, raisiny character, and of course wines with a lot of sugar. Now the wine itself is robust and for us really goes with the rich style of this wine. Lovely. So the good news with this chocolate dish is actually two parts. Of it. Okay. <laughs> so uh, the first part in front of yourself on the plate is our chocolate top. So we have a sablé biscuit. Over the top of that is a warm chocolate mousse seasoned with sea salt, 25 year old balsamic vinegar, and mani olive oil with a little sourdough crisp over the top. And a contrast for temperature and texture. We have a chocolate sorbet with a mani olive oil jelly. Now there's no obligation to mix the dishes together and have one mouthful of one mouthful of one. Okay. Enjoy. So let's do that then. I'm going to compare them both. Mm. It's very cold. It's like an, almost like an ice cream, but it's more moussey and soft. This one wins for me. This dish is to celebrate our garden. So we've got on the top we have a tart with a chamomile crempa with a gooseberry jam. In the pot you have a wood of panna cotta with mint granita as well. And the last one it's a toasted hay ice cream with a bee and fennel pollen. And I'll finish it off with our very own honey. So we've got two beehives in the garden since 2019. Thank you. Wow. Thank you very much. So here we have all these things that they have in their very own garden that they've basically showcased in these in these little treats that we have on our penultimate course. Let's just go right in with the with the tart first, which has the it's the chamomile tart with gooseberry, lemon. Verbena and Rose. Now I'm going to go for this. Mm. And finally, the ice cream with bean, fennel, pollen, and. So I'm just leaving the restaurant now. Unfortunately, my camera died um, while well, I was enjoying the final course. But what an exceptional meal that was. Now Sunday. I've had a full day to reflect on my experience at Sat Bains. I'm actually just in the process of editing the video right now. And yeah, I must say that was one of the most incredible meals of my life. And I don't think I'll be forgetting my experience there anytime soon. Of course, the astonishing menu loaded with creativity and depth of flavour, is the star of the show here, as it is in any restaurant. However, it would be unforgivable for me not to shout out the incredible team that make it even more of a magical experience. Most of all, I have to thank my warm, attentive waiter who made me feel at home, and my impressively knowledgeable and clearly very passionate sommelier who could sell wine to a lifelong teetotaler. They provide a top-notch, yet wholly unpretentious service and came equipped with really good conversation and banter, which made me forget that I was dining alone. If you're lucky enough to get a chance to visit restaurants at Baines for lunch or dinner, 
I thoroughly recommend it. And uh, like I say, I'll certainly be going again at some point. Until the next video, see you later.